always putting people in a position where they need to travel or they need to get to something, you know, how, how flexible are we being? And as I said, the um, immunisation teams that sit within NHS England are working on that to look at what we can do across the board. But that really is why we want to do some um, behavioural insight with our um, population so that we really do understand what the issues are because at the moment we're making a lot of guesses about why that vaccination isn't happening and when we know exactly what it is and how to target some of the, the messaging or some of the, um, the ways in which uh, people access vaccination then I think we'll be able to crack this but we really do need to understand that and get that insight. So just to say we are looking at absolutely everything that we can because you know, our aim is to get everything up to the, the target levels, which is what they call the herd immunity, which really does have an impact in terms of um, the spread of disease. Um, I know you touched on deprivation being an issue in um, uptake. I've also heard there was an issue a few years ago with the Roma community um, and uptake. Is there certain communities that we need to target more heavily than others? I think we, we need to target any communities where we think that there is low uptake. Um, and we, you know, we had no cases of measles a while ago and we do know that travel is bringing measles into the country. But my view is that we need to understand where there are pockets of, uh, if there are outbreaks, and we need to absolutely target all communities where that's happening. In terms of understanding the inequalities issues, again, we will be looking at that to look at how we target communities from different parts of the city where we think uptake is low. Um, thank you. Um, I suppose, understand having gone through that scrutiny panel, understand how vast this area is, <coughs> how many different sections of the community actually need immunisation from the huge range of, of um, vaccines that there are. We've really just picked out a few things again in this report. One thing which I'm delighted to see is the HPV vaccine coming in, being introduced for boys, which I think is something that everybody raised, but we didn't really report back on it as part of that panel, but that, that's a really, I think, a step in the right direction. Um, it's always disappointing when we see numbers go down, but um, the anti-vax isn't just rest um, restricted in the UK. I mean, it's huge in Italy at the moment, and the US. It's kind of, okay, so when there's fierce religious opposition to it, um, I think you're spot on when you say about the messaging, saying what exactly can happen if your two-year-old gets measles, um, what, what are the implications of polio, mumps, all of these things in very small children. I think that's the kind of thing that has to be out there. It's scary, people don't want to read that, but it's definitely the way forward. I just wanted to say, um, I actually find this quite perplexing. We should be able to chat about this before. I find it really perplexing that we've got this low uptake. Given that I read the report that was attached to this um, from the last scrutiny panel, and everything that, we, that was suggested and implemented last time, it's difficult to think of what more you could be doing other than what you, you were already doing. So, why there is a uh, level of take is really, really perplexing to me. Um, but I think you're absolutely right about stressing the seriousness of the disease because we were talking before about uh, people might not remember there was actually a measles death. Years ago in Wales, and I just think it was like you know, it's somebody in their low 20s or late teens or something like that. I just thought they were exactly the couple that were like the, the eye of the storm of the anti vaccine um, scandal. So it is a really, really serious illness, and I think uh, you know, if you start having these little deaths, and then you know, we're already too late, you've got to prevent it before it gets to that. So in Liverpool, um, for HPV, there is a contract that NHS England have with school nursing, um, and that 
delivers the HPV vaccine. Um, in terms of the workplace, um, we've done a lot around um, getting um, workplaces, um, frontline staff here in the council vaccinated for the flu vaccine last year. So there's, there were two strands last year because there was the national campaign and then we had um, our own campaign within the council which targeted particularly frontline staff um, and we had a really good uptake from that. So this year there's going to be the national campaign again but we're thinking about running our own kind of campaign because the national campaign means individuals go out and seek their own vaccination from pharmacy or wherever whereas what we did was we held sessions within a range of workplaces across the city um, and, and that worked really well so that people would turn up you know, on the day from work and get vaccinated. So um, again, we're looking at all of that to ensure that frontline staff are you know, well vaccinated over the, you know, the flu season period. Right. 
we do want to have it because you're mixing with so many people in close proximity, we don't want to now break the meningitis out. Item 10 is the same as the reference. These are on the, and these are approved by the Council AGM on pages 23 to 24. And again, they've just been option. Can we agree those 10 to Thank you. Item 11, the work programme. 25 to 27 of the agenda is the draft, draft big way of draft work programme for the Commission. Um, this is for the whole year, but there's a combination of status and reports. The report received in a motion and on the suggested office of by, by all services, the public health and CCG, we can basically, as, as we've always said, if you've got something that's been bring me to it, bring it to Peter, and we'll, we'll always try and fit it in some way. So you, you want to do something like that, but we've got one tonight that I'll go on to later on. But, um, yeah, can, can we just agree the draft way program for now? Go on, go on, sorry. Can I just say on that, yeah, we've already added two items tonight, which is the Paddington Village and the CCG operational plan as well. So, the major was already on there, wasn't it? So. Yeah. Um, okay, item 12 is the, uh, the appointment of the scrutiny panels. Now, again, there's going to be we usually appoint to all 50 panels that we've got ongoing, but we're not going to do that this year because um, we've appointed for the last couple of years so to one particular group of panels, not that many. So um, we've, we've got a live panel that's continuing, which is the Breast Premium Programme, and we've got members who are still on it, which is um, Natalie, who, who chairs the thing, Sarah, and Emily. Um, and, um, now, Sharon was on it last year, so, so she went along here, obviously. So I need some bits. Oh, you need some guess. You want to do? Yeah. Okay. Can we agree, Andrew? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. You got the other six screws. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'll look into that in a second. The the, uh, the other screws. Just remind me stuff. The other screws panels. Um, we won't appoint to them until we need them. The women's safe for instance, which is the joint screws. Um, that's two years we've been waiting for someone to do something about it. Mm. Yeah, so we will wait until they appoint and then we'll, we'll come up. Um, and in terms of another scrutiny panel, Steve. Yeah, I, I want to suggest that we set up a scrutiny panel to look at insourcing at our social care services. It's a massive field um, and uh, it's something I, I'm very interested in. I've got, you know, in a previous life, I've got involved in sourcing about 50 million of council services. Over the last year I've been having a number of conversations with trade unions, the GMB and Unison are very interested in this. There's a range of academics across the UK who've been doing work on it. Um, I think it will be a really important piece of work for us and I'd suggest that it could be done in certain phases. I think it's initial work almost of scoping it where you're looking at three or four things, areas of market failure, areas of service failure, or service challenges for us, and areas of financial opportunity. I think that initial work would allow you to identify where you want to concentrate on. You know, so for example, residential care is clearly an area of market failure. It's also an area of financial opportunity. For example, the industry, um, and analysts say that other things being equal, the capital costs of residential social care are £100 a week less per person if delivered by councils than the private sector. That's because of differential costs of borrowing, right? Um, in non-residential care, there are different questions. So I think what we, my suggestion would be if we set up an initial working group to report back to the next meeting with initial ideas on the scoping. The reason I think it's quite important is because of the implications of this. It doesn't harm the council's budget. We know that, and it's different, completely different, but it's a figure worth remembering, that we've saved two million a year because of insourcing environmental services. If you scale that up, 
about social care, you're talking about a lot of money when we have enormous challenges. We're looking at the budget which we're setting for three years. And there's a case for saying we should look at that for various reasons. One, because if it delivered savings or service improvements, you want to be scaling them up. But the second reason, which particularly relates to residential social care, is to look the capital implications of that. Um, the reason, as I said before, that a significant savings in public sector procurement of residential social care is because of differential borrowing costs. So you might want to look at the capital implications of this. The other aspect, of course, is that foundations, the new housing company we've set up, is going to work. Um, I think the other, the other complicated issue, and forgive me if I really send you asleep now, uh, we may or may not be leaving the EU. One of the key devices for insourcing is what's called the tackle exemption of the EU. If that goes, and we don't know if it would go if we leave the EU, it does affect. The tackle exemption means that if you, if you set up a company that you own as a council, as long as no more than 20% of the work it does is for private, it's outside your own services, you don't have to go out to procurement, which has big advantages. Um, it might be again in the debate, I've not seen this raised in the arguments over the implications of leaving the EU. And again, it might be something you want to make an input into to try and preserve an equivalent in UK law of the TECLA exemption if you left the EU, right? Because it does have implications for us in other services. So that's the case, one of my cases for saying that we should start doing some work on it quick because it is big and it is important. I know because I've talked to them that the Association of Public Service Excellence, the GMP and Unison and a group called the Foundational Economy Group, which includes academics from Manchester University and London would be willing to supply us with support. And the Holding Council has just taken back into their care several residential homes because of market failure. Um, so I just think it's a really exciting piece of work which we could be involved in working together. It's a really challenging piece of work and it would need to be done in stages, but I'd be really, really keen to pursue this. Okay. So, um, given everything that's Steve just said in terms of um, information to this panel. It is, I think, an issue that's been raised, I think, by your colleagues at previous meetings, and if uh, Martin, I think Martin at that um, stage, and um, he um, responded in the, in the fact, I suppose, just as a, an outline cost in terms of bringing all of our adult social care services in-house um, without doing anything different um, it's likely to cost in the region an additional cost in the region of around 40 million plus and um, what we are exploring at the moment and I understand there's a, a member's briefing scheduled for next week which Paul will be speaking to will also be speaking about the um, the ability to um, look at and bring in wage for care workers, which is another um, big issue and, and question. I think the, the UK Act makes very clear um, local authorities' responsibilities in terms of care mark, the care market, both shipping and sustainability. Um, and one of the developments that we've been, well, currently developing in the city uh, and will open um, during the latter part of this year are two new Homes where the council has borrowed money on the, the, through its capital borrowing um, program. And we're working with a care delivery partner to deliver the care in those homes. So we own the estate and the, um, the benefits of bringing uh, and building new care homes, building fit for purpose, um, built for that purpose um, into the city. So that's something that, so there are different models, and I think. The, um, the opportunities you outlined in terms of looking 
residential care because actually as a, as a city we probably support more people in residential care because we don't have other opportunities and more appropriate accommodation. So it's about exploring other opportunities to support people to remain in the community, in the, either in their own homes or in accommodation which is more appropriately able to meet their needs with care and support wrapped around um, the, the property and the individual. So I think there's a number of um, areas that we could explore in, if, if this is accepted as a proposal, I'm happy to um, work with um, you and colleagues in terms of exploring and scoping out what the best way of creating a focus for that piece of work and scrutiny panel might be. But um, next week there will be an opportunity to potentially explore this with a wider group of um, councillors um, through a members briefing that as I said Paul is um, providing and it's next Thursday. Thanks then. Well then what else you just said um, and this briefing that Paul was going to be in us. Sorry, mate. You did, you did. You did. I, I, just, I just want to support what, what, what Steve said really because I think we, we do need to do a, a scrutiny panel on this because I think there's, there's an opportunity here but I think if you look at the way you know, we've approached the budget over the last nine years it's kind of like you've got increasing demand in, in, in services there and we've got a decrease in um, budget coming through so you sort of, you, you, I know we're not quite doing this, we can't do more than but you're salami slicing each year, you've got the demand going up and the, and, and the money going down. And I think this is an opportunity to look at something very differently, look at how we can get better outcomes, how we can get something that's more cost effective, and if we can also get, as, as, as well as those, if we can get a bigger economic impact in cities, and I'm, I'm conscious like probably everyone sitting around here, but if you go in, you know, any working class community in this city, probably the single biggest employer, certainly of, 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 of women, is, 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 in the, is in the care sector, yet we haven't got you know, the, 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 the still and very low pay about, about treatment in there. So I think we, we need to look at this in a different way. What I think this would be an opportunity to do is to get all the expertise from, 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 from councillors who are involved in this and what we're seeing on the ground in our walks, but also to look through through APSI, through through trade unions and you know, GMB and, and, and Unison with, with what's going on elsewhere in the in, in the country and spend some time actually looking at what other areas are doing and um, to improve productivity, to get better outcomes, to, to do that. Not in a way that is saying we're not we're, we're getting it completely wrong in Liverpool, we're not getting it completely wrong in Liverpool. We've been dealt a really difficult situation and I think you know, we've done lots of innovative innovative things as a, as, as a council and we need to build on that but, but what expertise can we bring here to, to, and spend a bit of time actually going going through some of this so that we collectively get, get a better model that delivers more for Liverpool that's more cost effective and has a bigger impact on, on, on the city.
given what Sue said, I'm given the fact that next book turn up as well, and you want to have a go at this as well. Um, I want to suggest that we have a scope, the first scope of meeting between Sue Martin, Paul, and you two. No, 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 no. This is a scope. This, this is a scope of meeting. It's only going to be, it's only going to be the, the initial meeting, and then that will come back to us. And then we will decide whether or not we have a scope plan. No, we, we, you want to try and keep the idea of scope meeting is to keep it small, not to have everybody there. Otherwise, you might as well just bring it in. So, because we haven't got Paul and Martin here, it's best that we just have. It's it's Steve's idea. Nick put us up and said, Steve's in play. Plus, we're all going to have a briefing, don't forget, in, during the week. So, scope of meeting is just that. It's, it's, it's a test. Put your foot in the water. And then, depending on what comes out of that, that will come back here anyway, as everything does. And then, if a scoop the panel's decided on, that's what we'll do. We'll take it from that point. Change this to travel. Well, everybody's happy. So, that's good. Just, just to try and bridge the gap, because I'm not happy. I'm happy to see if I'm here as well. But I don't want to I'm the chair. If we have a scope of meeting, and we feel there's a basis to proceed, there's no reason we couldn't then quickly meet and have a wider thing, because and again, I do think, going back to the point, you know, yeah, the unions report, somebody forgive me for boring you to death, but I think you quoted the 40 million costs. One of the big costs, probably the biggest cost, is the pensions contributions. One of the reasons I'm really keen to involve the unions and be rapidly on about tackle exemptions is important, is because the deal that we negotiated with the GMB of our Liverpool Street Scene Services involved in accepting that we wouldn't take on the pension liabilities but there'd be a long-term commitment to meet that and if you want to avoid the enormous costs involved in that as an initial issue you've got to have the unions on side right and i i don't think unison or the gmb would immediately dismiss what i call a stage process right so that, that that's absolutely critical as you actually realize it Financing of that because it's not just the revenue costs of pensions that are a problem, it's the liabilities in terms of the long term financial position of the council. But it can be navigated, I believe. There you go. Are you all interested in this? Do you all want to be on the screen? Everyone? Not screen, you know, it's just everything. Um, Okay, I, I, I'm still going to say what I've said, so you can, you, you like to that meeting really quickly, yeah. right after the briefing if we can, or as soon after the briefing as humanly possible, and then it will obviously, be, if we need to have it the, 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 in the initial meeting, we can have it before the next slide. Okay, it's, just, it's a phone call. Right, so, and as you all put your hands up anyway, so, dear me. <laughs> okay. Are you happy with that? Yes. Yes, that's the answer. Aren't you? Okay. <laughs> right. We, we've got a plan. Right. So thank you for asking. As I say, you bring stuff here, we'll discuss it. Okay. Can we agree that before we move on? Yeah, Thank you. Scheme of delegation, that's on pages 28 to 33, and provides an overview of the decisions that are likely made. Can we leave that? Oh, sorry. Go on, Sarah. Two questions, if I may. Sorry. Well, first of all, the, um, the Price Court House Coopers review of social care contact. Will we get a report on how that is going to progress? Because if they're looking at reviewing the whole system, we need to look into how it's working. Sorry. It's um, to award, it's sorry, top of page 32, to award the contractor to take a review of how the city council manages social care contact and to design a future option. I was just wondering would we get to find out before it's implemented. Okay, um, PwC have um, been working with Careline, which is our social care first point of contact, um, over the last probably period of about six weeks. So they're just coming to the end of um, their, their piece of work. So, so 
So once we've had that, obviously an opportunity to review that um, and then any of the recommendations, then I think that would be an opportunity to bring that back again. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The second thing, Jack, I um, the second thing is the, um, the 5G thing, um, the cost of preparation of a business case. Um, 5G goes beyond just healthcare. Why has it got come out of our budget? Or something else in there. The, um, this is money that's been granted to the Liverpool City Council, so it's a delegated powers to accept the, the grant. And there are a number of Liverpool. It's very, you know, we all know that Liverpool's very special, but it's very special in being uh, selected as a test bed, for testing out the um, connectivity and the application in the health and social care field. Um, so Liverpool City Council working with a range of partners, uh, led by Census City, who's leading this piece of work. And one of the um, areas where some of the connectivity is being tested is in Kensington. Item 14 is the uh, schedule of updates. Um, the, the, the new agenda, so. Um, can, can I, before we finish, can I just, well, thanks for um, not challenging me as chair, so I, I appreciate it. Um, thanks for all sorts of the members that have decided to stay with us. Honestly, you've you got no idea how, much, how easy it makes that life for us going forward to have all that experience of us. Stay and um, the other ones are all alternates. If you can, if you can't make a meeting, can you please let everyone know? That means Peter, himself, and, and the whip. And I'll also try to arrange your own alternates. Okay, so, so don't leave it. Don't, don't leave it to us to do.